This is the syllabus of first year, second year, third year and final year of MBBS. This is quite a lot. If you choose to read only the notes, well then, this is the size of the notes. How many times did you open a book, read the chapter and forget it just the next day? I'm sure there are many different courses with so much more to study and learn than mine. But this is a story of how I remember most of the things that I actually study with my mind into it, be it from books or lectures and how I'm able to recall it whenever I need it. Just a short disclaimer, you always choose what you have to remember but you never choose what you have to to forget. If a chapter has 10 subtopics and I choose to remember 3 of them, I will for sure remember them. But I did not choose to forget the rest of them. This is one of the ways that I still remember the innovation of every single muscle of the body with the nerve roots, the cross sections of the brain, the classification of cephalosporins and so many more different things. I sure have forgotten a huge chunk but what I remember, I remember by heart. The methods that I will talk about today require just one investment from your side, that is time. You need time to build each of these skills which I'll be talking about and you can't hurry them because you have a test tomorrow. Before we get there, hello, my name is Anuj. I'm a finally MBBA student at GMC Nagpur. It's so nice to see you here. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Chapter 1 Stories I'll just tell you a story behind the stories method. It was a rainy day and I was sitting behind my microscope in the pathology lab. Our internal exams were near and there were four subjects which we had to do. I was discussing with my friend about what we're actually going to do about this exam coming up soon. And on the spot, he decided that we should revise the antihypertensive drugs, what are the names of the angiotensin receptor blocker molecules that we had, and then we made a story around all of that. So the story went something like this. A candy man comes to a tense street and he offers low candy khalo. And then a girl approaches to that person and she asks, tell me, do you have an omelette flavored candy? And the guy tells her, well, we do. Now each word over here meant something. At that time in second year, I wasn't even able to pronounce half of the names I was studying in pharmacology, but I had a story which was stuck to me till final year. So a candy seller comes to a tense street, angiotensin receptor blockers. A tense street that means it is for antihypertensive and asks low candy kalo, low sartan candy sartan. And then a girl approaches and asks, tell me, tell me sartan, do you have an omelette, all me sartan flavored candy, candy sartan. And the guy tells her, well we do, well sartan. Let me explain to you a bit about how the stories work. See, stories engage our mind, our emotions and imagination all at once. As listeners, we participate in the story with both body and mind. And storytelling is a human art form. Psychologist Jeremy Brown's research suggests that the facts are 20 times more likely to be remembered if they are a part of the story. So how do you use these stories for your preparation? First of all, find the things that you can actually convert into stories and relate them to your normal real life. I'll give you an example. I remember that Edwards syndrome is trisomy 18, Patau is trisomy 13, Downs is trisomy 21. By remembering that Edward is the main character in Twilight Saga and he does pretty above 18 activities in that movie. Therefore, for Edward, we need 18 three times. So I also remembered a few IPCs based on the roll numbers that my friends have. So IPC 18, 19, CRPC 1, 2. So all of these things are pretty important for forensic medicine, etc. I really did not put a lot of effort into generating many many stories for everything which I read because I personally had one of the best resources which has done all the heavyweight lifting for me. Therefore I'm so thrilled to announce you that I'm partnering up with this amazing brand that is Sketchy Medical. I myself use Sketchy Medical a lot in second year MBBS and they're a platform which will give you things to remember through imagination, storytelling and visual learning. Sketchy is one of the literal reasons why I've scored a distinction in micro, pharma and patho because I was able to remember everything spotless. Sketchy is a research Research proven learning tool which helps you break down complex things through unforgettable experiences. Enough talking, let me just give you a practical example. There's this bacteria that we all read in micro, right? That is Streptococcus pneumoniae. In the sketch of this bacteria called as pneumococcus, the virulence factor of the organism is its tough capsule. Therefore, this bacteria can be seen wearing a very tough armor which is the main source of its strength. But you can see that there is a point in its chin which is weak. Therefore, that signifies optochin sensitivity. The drug of choice for its infection is ceftriaxone. Therefore, it's carrying a flag with three axes and it's an alpha hemolytic bacteria. Therefore, this is an alpha tournament. All of these things which I've read from Sketchy are just permanently imprinted into my brain. And all of these videos give you an imagination that you will remember for life. And they have videos on all the different subjects from MBBS, right? From physiology, biochemistry, all the way to surgery and medicine. Sketchy Medical is one of those resources which will help you not only in neat PG, but also in university exams and also clinically. So use the first link in the description and go to Sketchy's website to sign up. Also, Sketchy Medical is currently having a back to school sale where everything that you purchase is 20% off so highly recommend you check out that sale before it is over. Thanks a lot to Sketchy Medical for sponsoring this segment. Chapter 2 Imagination When I tell you that Anuj eats an apple when he studies, you imagine this. 
and when I tell you that the best part of an ice cream is the bottom one, you imagine this. In both of the instances, you used your mind to build a picture around whatever I was saying. In fact, the same thing happens whenever you read something which you comprehend. Once you have that picture in your mind, it is so much more easier to grasp that image. I could easily replace the simple things with the complex things and you would still remember that image in your mind. I could easily say Anuj gives to a patient a third generation cephalosporin IV that is ciftriaxone. Now you have got that patient that I am giving an injection to a patient of ciftriaxone. Once you imagine it, it becomes 10 times more easier. And that's the entire concept of imagination. And that was the reason that anatomy is still my favorite subject because once I imagine it, it just stays with me forever. I could imagine all the structures passing through the cubital fossa or the nerve roots of the brachial plexus or the lumbosacral plexus. I could see all the nerves, the muscles, the chambers of the heart, the articulation of the vertebrae right in front of my eyes and that's the reason I did not forget it. I could imagine it in perfect detail in a way that the book painted a picture in my mind which was permanently fixed. It doesn't just stop there. Imagination is one of the key things that you use to ever understand a topic. Now, how do we apply this concept of imaginations to your own study? First of all, search for the concepts in your book because you can't apply this imagination thing to a fact. Second thing, build a picture around it and connect to it emotionally. Like I told you, Anuj eats an apple. You build a picture and you connect it to it emotionally. The most practical aspect of using imagination in your studies, especially in MBBS, is imagining that you have the disease that you're actually studying. So let's say you're reading diabetes. So you have to imagine every single complication that a diabetes person is going to have in his life and you're going to apply that to yourself. You would imagine yourself in a diabetes ketoacidosis or hyperosmolar coma or maybe even having retinopathy nephropathy and neuropathy along with polydipsia polyphagia and polyuria and that is when you will understand key this is the way a patient is going to present at my clinic if you're reading a disease take up an atlas of pathology and see what are all the diseases manifesting grossly and microscopically you will remember them totally fine in a manner of a stick figure in your notebook and remember it that way you can draw a patient with Cushing's disease with a fat abdomen a fat face could even show something like a pituitary adenoma present over there or perhaps even write down different causes in that very diagram and now you have to remember that diagram this stick figure helps you build your imagination from the base let's say you are reading neurology you come across the scale called as gascochroma scale and then you are reading about abdominal trauma in surgery and orthopedics now you have to connect the dots and imagine everything together so imagine yourself that you're a doctor posted in casualty a bus crashes and 20 people are injured and they are all rushed to the casualty you are present over there you have to carry out the triage which is an important concept that you have to remember you have to assess the gascochroma scale of each patient and thirdly after following abdominal trauma you have to conduct this ultrasonography test called as FAST. So you do an E-FAST, you do a FAST and that is the way that you remember everything and every single step comes to you naturally. Imagine myself as a doctor who was currently posted in pediatrics and I had to resuscitate a neonate. All the different steps of resuscitation had to be followed sequentially and once I imagine all the initial steps then I'll, I'll, I'll do the suction, I'll do the bag and mass ventilation, the chest compressions, then the adrenaline injection. Once I imagine all of that it came to me naturally the next time. If you're reading NCRT use the example of pneumatophores. Imagine that you're walking around in a field of pneumatophores and what it would be like and that way connect to it emotionally Ch chapter 3 images one of the best aids to your imagination is images because the things which you cannot imagine images provide you readily. This is a PDF I made in second year MBBS and as you can see there are so many different photographs over here. Well can you connect the dots and find out what is the causative organism behind all of these different conditions I've shown you here? The answer is Staph aureus and this is an organism which is notorious for causing very very different types of infections and that organism is mostly living on your face at this moment and watching the video with you. And no rubbing won't get it off so stop it. Therefore I recommend you use this face wash by my... <laughs> They didn't call me back. You see how I collected all these images to remember the infections caused by Staph aureus? This is based off a principle known as the picture superiority effect. When we read a text or listen to an audio, we are likely to remember only 10% of it three days later. Once we are presented the data with pictures along with it, that number increases from 10% all the way to 65% at the end of three days. So therefore, when I read something which has a lot of learning into it, I Google it, find out all the images and put it out into a PDF so that I could refer to it later. Once that PDF is formed, it will really help you in your academics, be it NEET PG or be it clinics. And secondly, it will also help you financially if you put it out on the right website. I also use this picture superiority effect when I was recording the lectures for biology where I showed different images of the things which you never had seen. You all read that kelps are these giant algae which, which are present in the oceans but you have never seen a kelp. So I put out images of kelp over there so that you could understand them better. So how do you apply this image thing to your studies? Firstly, find a topic that requires visual aid. Forensic medicine and toxicology is one such subject in third year MBBS which requires a huge amount of visual aid because you don't understand half of the things that you're seeing. You will 
will read a lot about marbling, mummification, yellow fibers, white fibers, and so many different things in forensic that you won't be able to understand it. There are so many ways an autopsy can be conducted, and unless and until you don't see one, you won't really understand it. Another such subject is ophthalmology, where you really, really need a lot of images to understand everything which is happening within the eye. Because personally, I learned ophthalmology using many, many images, and I got a distinction in that. Secondly, whenever you're studying a topic, just go to Google or Marrow or Daily Rounds and search for whatever topic you are reading. Let's say multiple sclerosis, and then just see the image present over there. Most of the time in Neat PG, they use the image which are present in Google. And once you see the first 15 or 20 images of Google for the same disease, you will have that disease thing imprinted in your mind. Third step, add all these images which you just collected into your notebook, and there you go, you have a great notebook which will help you a lot. Chapter four, practical learning. So you've probably wondered how doctors remember everything they learn. You know the things which they might have studied like years or even decades ago. I certainly did because growing up, we had this medicine box in our house and it contained all the different medicines for any condition that you might occur. And whenever I used to get sick, my parents used to give me those medicines and I always used to wonder ki in 500 dawaiyon mein se inhe kaise pata ki kaun si dawai kis cheez mein deni hai aur nahi deni hai, iska correct dose aur duration kya hai. And I always ended up thinking that I will never be able to remember that. But guess what? Today I remember all of these things which my parents remember. And the answer is apart from theoretical learning, the most important answer is practical learning. Where after a phase of rote learning and writing exams, the things which you have written down actually come to you in real life. So you can read all about amoxicillin and its side effects in pharmacology, but once you prescribe that drug to somebody and they complain to you about the side effects, you will automatically remember it. I still get blown away by the amount of things a practical learning can give to you. Books offer you a window through which you can peep out and see what is going on, but practical learning is actually going out and playing. There's a huge difference. So what are the ways that I use this method in my daily life? I make a clinical logbook which contains all the clinical cases that we see on a daily basis. That is one of the ways I'm able to remember what I'm seeing clinically. Second, I make sure that every patient that I get a chance to interact with, I take their detailed history right to the ending of the socio-economic history. Every single point over there, I take it in detail because then I know what are the associations slash not associations of any disease. Thoroughly examine the patient from head to toe with all the systems, no matter what my case is. I do that only when I have like one hour at my hand. In my examinations, I usually take around 20 minutes to complete a clinical case. Doing clinical examination will give you so many different hints about what are the different signs, symptoms and missing things are present in that patient. Another example a senior of mine used and she told me was that she never learned what is the number of each cannula which is present. She just remembered it through practical experience. And the most practical example that all of us can give you is we learned the national immunization schedule the week that we were posted in immunization. So in just one week, I got to know what are different vaccines made up of, how do we administer each vaccine, what is the dose, what are the side effects and I even got to administer a few vaccines to babies myself. Once I did that, I immediately remembered everything. There are countless examples of practical learning and I urge you all to start learning practically. The key point is how do you apply this practical learning thing in into your own life? First, attend all the clinical postings. Second, ask questions freely. Especially if you are having a class with the head of the department or the people who are much, much more experienced, ask all the questions that you want because they already consider you as the dumbest person in the room. So you cannot be any more dumber by asking dumb questions. So no matter how dumb your question is according to you, ask it because there are like five other people in the room who might have the same question. Thirdly, take an initiative and present the case yourself. I see a lot of people who are shying away from taking a case just because they feel it will be ashaming if they don't know the answers to the questions which the externals are going to ask. Don't do that. Present a case. Four, spend adequate time with the patient and get to know them thoroughly and do the entire history taking thing from medicine and do entire clinical examination like we do in surgery. Buy clinical books and read all the points from there. Fifth, talk to a relative suffering from the same because they will probably tell you 10,000 different things on a personal level because you connect with them. Sixth, use Google to read about various life stories of celebrities suffering from various diseases. That way you will be able to learn them easier. Amitabh Bachchan suffers from Mycenia Gravis, a disease which is very very important in almost all the years of med school. For need, unfortunately there are not a lot of practical things you can do at your point. But you can search on YouTube for all the examples that you find are difficult to remember. You can learn a lot about physics by watching YouTube and different videos by creators such as Veritasium, Tom Scott, Dustin and so many more. Chapter 5 Revisions and Multiple Recall If you've watched me study for an exam before, you know that I have a ritual that before any exam I call up my friends and we discuss all the MCQs and all the important questions. That is one of the reasons that I'm able to cover a long syllabus in a short amount of time. See, discussion with friends will bypass all the nonsense which you don't need for the exam and give you only and only the things which you actually need. You will learn accountability through this. That means you have to do your part. You have to explain to them and they are explaining it to you. And secondly, you will be practicing the Feynman technique, which is one of the most famous and revolutionary techniques in learning anything. There are only five steps to the Feynman technique. First, choose the topic that you want to explain. Explain it to a 12 year old. 
reflect, refine and simplify and repeat that step all over again. First, find friends. If not friends, you will definitely find juniors. Juniors are much more simpler to explain stuff and they will mostly never say no to a senior. So if you don't have friends, that is one of the best alternatives that you've got. Second, distribute the topics to each of the person who is participating in a group discussion. You don't have to carry all the heavy weight. Thirdly, explain and learn. Chapter 6, Generating Interest. Before 6th standard, my performance was so low in school that my parents thought that they would need to buy a Kirana shop for me so that I could earn a living later in my life. But the first topic that caught my attention in class 6 standard was sexual reproduction in flowering plants. And it was a sunny day in my school and the teacher was teaching I was absolutely not paying attention to whatever was going on. But then for once my mind actually said ki chalo dekh lo kya bol rahi hai ma'am sun to lete. And once I heard that ma'am speak about all the things present in that chapter, I became a total fan of science and from that moment my life completely changed. And my parents thankfully no longer have to think about that Kirana shop. And then I joined MBBS. With the gradual pressure of the overgrowing books, I lost my spark about caring for things and it all slowly became just an exam question which I had to prepare for. Because once that exam was done, I would be over with my studies. And instead of caring, my main goal to study became exams. As we grow older, I think it's a very natural process that it happens. We lose interest in the things that we are studying and we begin to lose the core thing that was pushing us, our curiosity. But you have to try to generate some interest. And if you generate some interest in it, you will remember that subject for a longer period of time. Chapter 7. Testing and Learning When I was a need aspirant, in the first one and a half years of my preparation, I used to give around 8 tests per month. In the last two months, that went up to 2 tests per day, 60 tests per month, which were full syllabus and were very difficult. And I can attribute it to be the best thing which I did. After you have learned so many different things using so many methods, you will use it to test yourself. If you are good, then you don't need to study our topic any further. If you are not, then you are probably weak in that and you should study it. Our memory works by forming connections and each time we recall something, this neuronal connection gets stronger and stronger. So when you test yourself through grand tests, through subject tests, question banks, MCQs or whatever, you will remember that thing more and more. It will become a natural reflex. So how do you apply this to your own studies? First of all, do not ever shy away from giving a test. I was afraid of grand tests a few weeks ago, but then I just gave one. I just one day opened up the grand test tab and gave one. Secondly, think of all the tools that you're using to test yourself as not just testing tools. For every question that you incorrect, there is an opportunity to learn and not do that same question incorrect the next time. Thirdly, have consistency in whatever thing you're doing and that will change your life. Well, those are all the tips that I could give you. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please go and check out Sketchy using the first link in the description. It's a totally awesome resource and you would love it. I know you would love it. And thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to hit the like button or press the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. It's your Vanuj. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.